So thank you for joining. Buenas tardes. Uh, boa tarde. Hello, welcome. And uh, let's start before we go to the organization of the class and some information concerning exams and, and contents of the class. I want to give you first an appetizer about what we are talking in this fall term. And I want to give you two, how shall I say, problems or things to think about. So that's uh, very elementary in one sense, and in the other sense, it is kind of philosophical. Okay? So every week, I will ask you some basic questions about mathematics, and you are invited to think about it and to share it in the class or to send me an email. So the class is not just formulating a big theorem and proving it. Our purpose in this class is to see how the concept of moduli space was created, how you would develop such a concept, what is the background, what does it mean to classify, what do you want to do. Okay, so the first part until beginning of November will be mostly talking about what is a moduli space. Okay, and then in the second part we will exemplify this concept in the concrete situation of endpoints on the projective line. Okay, so let me start with two problems. Now let's see if this works and if you can read. So today is not a real class, it's just an appetizer and to see whether you can hear me, whether I can see you, and whether you can ask questions, something like this. Okay. So I guess that the transmission is a little bit delayed, maybe 10 seconds, but even more. So when you ask a question, it might be already late, but don't hesitate to ask. Okay. I'll come back to this in a moment, but first I want to start to give you some uh, impetus with a very simple question, number one, which is about equality. And I will list you various objects, and the exercise for until tomorrow will be to decide, following your own taste, which objects are equal and which ones are not. And we take simple objects. So you see always A, B, C. Now we will change a little bit. We will write A star b star c star then we will take y maybe b c y equal capital a b c z equals c b a c equals square star plus, and maybe two more, let me call it small x equals x, y, z, and the last one, maybe small a equal a, b, and small c. Okay? So, <clears throat> In first view, you would say, that's stupid. Now, what do we do here? But there's something deeper behind, and I want to share with this, this background. So what does it mean to be equal? Okay. So equality, if you take the strict, inequal, the strict equality here, then you would say that this set here, I see, I hope you see my arm, and this one, they are equal. 
They are first, they are both their sets. We agree on our usual terminology. They have the same element and they have the same letter. They are, the set is called x. No? But of course, what we have here, y equals a, b, c, is that the same set, but it has a different name. So is the name part of the object or not? So if you write x equals x, that's certainly true. But it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not interesting, because we have the same object twice. If we write y equals x, okay, that's more delicate, because the object in the set are the same, but the name of the object is different. So when we say these two are the same, we already say we don't care about the name. We throw away the name, and we just look at the object. Okay. Now, these parentheses here are usually the, the signs, the symbols for, for sets. But of course, we could take also this bracket or any other bracket, and we could say we don't care about the sign, the symbol which is around our object. We just take what is inside, A, B, C. Now here, over here, we have capital A, capital B, and capital C. So that's in some sense, again, equal to the first x, a, b, c. It's just that the elements have a different name. So if the elements have a different name, do we agree that this is equal or not? So instead of equality here, maybe we should rather talk about equivalence. We want to define something to be equivalent or not. And the homework to, till tomorrow is define your preferred equivalence relation just on these objects here and group the, how many do we have? We have eight, let me call it objects. according to this equivalence relation. Okay, So you could say, for instance, just to give you an idea, you could say if the elements are the same, but the name of the object is different, I declare it as equivalent. But you could also say I declare it as equivalent if the cardinality is the same. Okay, So please think about it. So that's uh, problem number one, and we will make it more precise later on. And already now, I will have to to clean this. So now this will always take two minutes, but I think that this this size of writing should be okay. So does it? Maybe you afterwards when we have a discussion, maybe you tell me whether my white shirt is uh, bad for reading. Maybe I should step to the side so you can see everything. So that's the first problem I want to tell you. So that's like in the garage where you're washing a car. And then we have here a machine. This was not sufficient yet, so we have to do it again. So it's the first time I'm, I'm giving a whole class on this light board. I hope that it, it helps you to follow the class instead of just having a Zoom session. This is not problem number one. Problem number two. Maybe I start over here. Is projectivity. So 
So, there are a lot of people from Spain following this class. And I think they have classes in projective geometry. But maybe not everybody is so familiar with it. So I want to, I want to propose you the following geometric problem. So let me draw first this triangle. Okay. In this triangle, an elementary theorem of geometry tells you that if you have here A and B, and here capital A and capital B, then A divided by small a is equal to b equal to small b. Okay. I don't know how you call this in English. In German, you call it Strahlensatz. That's something you learn already in high school. And we want to do something in the similar spirit, but slightly more complicated. Now we take four lines. Let's say here we have the origin. So these are four lines in R2, just basic R2, through 0. So you have to think that here somebody is standing and looking in these four directions. And now we take other lines. So red is not as good as yellow, but I hope you can see it. Yeah, it's not perfect, but. You should give these colors a minute because they get brighter and more visible if you wait a bit. Ah, if I wait, in what sense? Um, that if you write something, yes. um, a sentence, for instance, the beginning of the sentence will be brighter and more visible than the end of the sentence if you're still writing, because if the, the colors, uh, they get brighter and lighter if you okay. just, if you just dry on the yeah. wall. OK. So I think you can see it here. And you, we get intersection points. Some of you may have seen already this picture. So we have here, we have line 1, line 2, and line 3. On each of these three lines, we have four points. And they are not arbitrary. Okay. So the question will be, what is the common property of the three four tuples of points. So uh, <clears throat> of course, in the class, I will be more precise. But today, I just want to, to initiate a little bit your way of thinking. They should share some properties because they are stemming from a very precise picture. Okay. So this is related to the following. Uh, show that three distinct lines through 0 in R2 can be mapped by a linear isomorphism. to any three other distinct lines. This is linear algebra. It's just a warm up for till tomorrow. We will discuss it tomorrow. Today, it's just to, to raise a little bit of interest. See, this is not possible. for four lines. Because this any does not hold. But 
if the images, the image lines, have, and now I will just write it down, and you can look it up. Either you know it or you look it up on the internet in Wikipedia, have the same cross ratio. So in Spanish, this is razón doble. If the same, then yes. Okay. So this cross ratio will relate here to the question A. Okay. So that's something which will pop up when we study endpoints on the projective line. OK, so that's just uh, two sort of questions we want to address. And uh, my concept of this class is, of course, it will be a frontal class because I will be writing on the blackboard and talking to you. And there are so many in the audience that we cannot really have a dialogue. But I will come to this in a moment, how we organize the class, OK? So let me give you some information how we plan to do this. So I have to step aside to make the photograph of this page. So these pages, these boards, will show up on the website. We will upload it there, and then you can look it up. And there will be also typed notes, as I already indicated in my many mail. OK, so third part for today, and we will finish soon, informations. So first, do you have uh, certain questions you want to be discussed here? Uh, you can also send me an email, but uh, if there's a question of general interest, please go ahead and just Turn on your microphone, turn on your camera, and speak it out. I wanted to ask you, don't you want to, uh, don't you want to press the recording, or are you going to record this, uh, the video as well, or how, how does it work? This, this should be automatically recorded. Uh, Usually they ask us, as participants, whether this is allowed, but I don't know, maybe it's recorded, so. Uh, I, I think it is because usually you see a, a red dot flashing in the corner and it says recording next to it and I don't see it. I will ask I my... I think we do local recording here, but not in Zoom here. Ah, okay. So we, I have a Markus who is my, my advisor, my technical advisor. He is here today and he just told me that the recording is made here locally and not on Zoom. Okay? Yeah, that's so that's why you are not asked. Okay? Okay, and then the, so I have to get familiar with all this background. So uh, I'm very happy that I can use this uh, light board and transparent board. Uh, it's a funny thing, I think. Uh, the problem is that you cannot use it in classes in presence because everything will be left to right. No, it's reflected. Okay, so one thing which is a little bit delicate is that I would like to talk to, to you, but you cannot switch on the camera, everybody, OK? Because then the Zoom connection will, will suffer. But at the same time, if I just look at the camera and talk to the camera, that's not very, so I had this for one and a half years now, talking to a camera. And that's not the same style and not the same emphasis as when you talk to people. So what I would propose is the following. Maybe among you, there are some volunteers who would agree to, to activate their camera during the class so that I have maybe five or six uh, people which I can see on the screen. I have a monitor in front of the, of the transparent board. And then at least I can, it feels like talking to somebody. Yeah? So uh, I repeat. I would need, they needn't be the same all the time. 
some people who agree to switch on the camera, not everybody, and then uh, I will, at the moment I see something like 20 uh, cases with your, with your names. Uh, I will try to, to arrange this in a way that I have larger, photo, uh, larger camera views. But like this, it's already nice. And if you want to go away for a moment, or if you, uh, it doesn't matter if you switch off, no? But OK. So we have a little bit of a dialogue. It seems that we don't have a delay. So when you ask questions, it's immediate. I have a, for the other class, my algebra class, we have a, a streaming by cameras. And there we have a delay of 20 to 30 seconds. And this makes it impossible to discuss things. But it looks like that here it will work out. Okay. So as you, <coughs> as you know, we are something like 75 people at the moment. That's quite a lot from various universities and countries. I'm very happy to have so many people from the Iberian uh, Peninsula, Spain and Portugal, but also Austria, France, Germany, and maybe there will be more people to join. But of course, it's also a matter of organization, how we communicate. Yeah. I want to keep my emails as uh, few as possible, but from time to time I will send you a reminder or additional information. Okay. Uh, some of you want to get credits for this class. So those who are in Vienna or in Austria, they don't have problems. In Spain, in Spain, at some university, it will be possible uh, within the doctoral program, for instance, at Universidad Complutense de Madrid, and also, I think, in the Autonoma. I'm not sure if it would work in Sevilla. Please check with your local people, with your studies department, to see if you can, can get a credit. I will do exams at the end of the class, but the class consists of two parts. Each is about seven weeks. So some people might prefer to have just a shorter credit yeah, for the first half of the class. That's also possible. And we do a certificate middle of November or so. Okay? But of course, I'm happy if everybody continues until end of January. Some dates. At some dates, there will be no light board, but just a Zoom, normal Zoom transmission, because I'm not in Vienna and I have not the light board with me. This will be indicated separately, for instance, when we have Austrian holidays and the university is closed. Okay? So usually we meet on Tuesday at 5.30, and if something else is happening, I will let you know. Okay? What else do we have to discuss? Oh, yeah. What about an additional kind of private discussion session, problem session, maybe on another day, so that we can discuss either further uh, topics or clarify things you might not be familiar with? It could be that from the projective geometry or group theory, some concepts are not so familiar with you, and then we could kind of refresh these or explain them in more detail. Yeah? I think we will do this uh, depending on your reaction. No? If, you, if you think that it would be helpful to have a, such a class, such a session, I'm happy to do it, but we don't have to do it. Okay? But Maybe in a smaller group, it would be nice to discuss things uh, in more detail. Okay. Uh, and uh, the class is rather elementary. So this is, I will repeat it tomorrow. But we will have uh, so the, the theorem of Delin, Mumford, and Knudsen is very, proper, very famous, very prominent, with a difficult proof. Yeah. Technically, very challenging. But there have been, meanwhile, simpler proofs. And uh, currently, as I told you already in my description of the course, we are working on a proof which is more or less complete, which is really elementary. You need very little of projective geometry. You need a little bit of graph theory, but that's about all. 
and so I'm a newcomer to this field and uh, I enjoyed very much working on it. And that's the reason why I give this lecture because maybe you also like it and enjoy it. It's really a very funny interplay between geometry and combinatorics. We constantly move between the two. And it will also be a little bit philosophical as I already indicated uh, in the two problems. We try to understand what does it mean to have an equivalence relation? What is a classifying space? What is a moduli space? No? We will focus on these basic questions. OK, uh, it seems that it works more or less. You hear me, you see me, I see some of you. Let me just check how many there are. Uh, Now that's so that's a little bit difficult here because I I cannot move. Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah, we are quite a few people. So everybody uh, is very welcome. Do you have any questions? Otherwise, we finish for today and start then tomorrow with the real material. Everything OK so far? So uh, it would be nice to give the class in Spanish, but uh, not everybody is familiar with Spanish. There are many Spanish people, so we stick to English. Sometimes maybe a little bit of German, sometimes a little bit of Spanish, but we have to do it in English. OK, thank you for this. For this uh, uh, test trial session. At the beginning of the class, so the 10 minutes before the class, I will always show a video. So the waiting time is kind of uh, animated. And then we start tomorrow at 5.30, same station and same wavelength. Thank you for coming today and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow.